Minimalism helped me conquer fears in my life. And today I want to share with you three different things that minimalism has helped me overcome. First off, I had a fear of not being prepared. I wanted to be prepared. I wanted to have things when they were needed. If I wanted to do a craft with my children, I wanted to just have everything that I needed right there. But the problem was I had so many craft things that I never took time to do anything with my children. So as we go through this journey and we declutter our homes, there always has to be a balance. We don't want to completely get rid of everything and have to buy it new whenever we need it. But at the same time, if we keep too much, it'll get in our way. How many times have you thought, well, I should keep this just in case I need it. But all of those decisions were fear-based. It wasn't that I wanted those things. It's just that I was afraid of not having the things that I need when I would need them. I worked with Sue several years ago and she struggled with this as well. She admitted that she wanted to be the one that had the resources to help her adult children. So if her adult children were ever in need, she would be able to say, oh, I have that, let me provide that for you. And it didn't matter what it was. It could be just a can of pop or a power tool. Her being able to provide for her children was where she was finding her identity. So the idea of getting rid of all of the extra things was terrifying for her. What would happen if her children needed something and she wasn't able to provide it? For me, I realized I was doing this with the craft items because I wanted to have everything for my children in case we decided to do a craft. The problem was I had so many craft items and so many of everything that I never took time to do those crafts with my children. I was prepared, but I didn't have time to enjoy it with my kids. Sue had everything. She was prepared for when her children were in need, but trying to manage and organize all the things kept her from actually spending time with her children. Number two, minimalism helped me get out of my comfort zone. All the self-help books will tell you, get out of your comfort zone, that's where the magic happens. And it is true. It doesn't matter where we are in life, when we get out of our comfort zone, that's when we can enjoy things. If it's zip lining or skiing, or if you're experimenting in art, getting a new job, developing new relationships. And in our homes, particularly for me, there was clutter on every surface. And I had grown accustomed to it. When we're in a situation, even if we don't really like the situation, I didn't like that my home was full of clutter, but I knew what to expect. I knew where to find things. I knew I had everything that I needed. We often think that it's easier just to endure in this situation that we're in than to experience the discomfort of moving out of that situation. So seeing the empty spaces in your home can be uncomfortable at first. It will seem weird if the counters, the tables, and every surface have always been full and then all of a sudden they're empty. It's almost unsettling to walk into the house. And I got rid of so much and it was uncomfortable to do it. It was uncomfortable to make the decisions. It was uncomfortable to move things out of the house. And I doubted myself. But in doing that and embracing minimalism, it has opened me up to so much more of life instead of just taking care of my stuff. Minimalism does eliminate material possessions, but even more so, it eliminates the, the stuff yelling at us, the, the visual to-dos, the things that say like, hey, you need to dust me, you need to rearrange me, you need to put me away, you need to fix me. Once you get rid of that, then your time isn't spent beating yourself up for all those things that you're not doing, because now they're gone. Number three, minimalism helped me get rid of the fear of disappointing people. I am a people pleaser. When I was first married and in the midst of having babies on Christmas, people would gift me Christmas decorations. And I felt like, okay, they put thought into this. I should display these Christmas decorations. So just imagine me, 22 years old, three kids in three years, and Christmas would come around and I would put up all these decorations that people got me. And I would feel overwhelmed because now there wasn't just all the clutter in my house. Now there was all this extra clutter in my house. And they were decorations that I didn't really like. But I thought they purchased me these items and I didn't want to hurt their feelings. One day, I realized that I was decorating every Christmas with all kinds of decorations that I didn't enjoy. The process of decorating and then 
taking down the decorations at the end of the year was just overwhelming. And I was already exhausted with three little kids. It turns out that Christmas decorations are an easy gift. They don't take a lot of thought. You can purchase them on clearance after Christmas, save them all year, and then gift them to the next Christmas. And that's what I had been given. These gifts had been given out of obligation, and then I was displaying them out of obligation. Neither of us were benefiting from it. When I got rid of those Christmas decorations, nobody noticed. They had not remembered what they had given me. They were just kind of mindless gifts. They had purchased them on clearance. They gave me something because they felt obligated to give me something. And when I let them go, nobody cared. I had been so afraid of disappointing people. I had been so afraid of hurting their feelings. But when I allowed myself to acknowledge that these items weren't serving me, they were overwhelming me, and I shouldn't have things in my home, especially decorations that I don't care for. I know there are people out there who do notice when we get rid of things, but that's not most people, and that should not be a determining factor on what we keep. I had been afraid of not being prepared, I had been afraid of being uncomfortable, and I had been afraid of hurting people's feelings. And minimalism has helped me work through all of those things. Not that I don't struggle anymore, but I am in a much better place emotionally. If you would like to join me in decluttering, I have the Clutter Free Army. I send out a weekly PDF with six 10-minute missions, an area to focus on, and questions to ask to help you decide what deserves to take up space in your home and what needs to be eliminated. I'll put the link to that in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.